Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is the Sam Schmitty here, back for episode number eight of our Vampire Let's Play. It's kind of crazy how fast the episodes have gone by already, but honestly, I love this. Uh, I love this game so far, except that it's scary. Honestly, I shat myself last up. So if you want to go check it out, it is on my YouTube channel right now. Make sure you go check it out before you watch this one because there could be potential spoilers. So yeah, click off now if you haven't seen it. Anyway. Um, last episode, we did, um, go to the abandoned morgue to get some more medical supplies here for the patients. Um, yeah, needless to say, it was a rough episode for me. I definitely got spooked a bit, for sure. Um, we ended the episode off here needing to, uh, craft the treatment for fatigue, as you see, um, under the night shift, right there. And I was an absolute arse and made one of these serums so that'll help me in combat but I had to go back there and get some more um, supplies for the um, medication and here I have them right here eight of them so apparently they're pretty common after you find them originally so yeah we're gonna make it here in a second but while I was doing that I did find something else to read down in the morgue um, yeah it was a death report here so let's uh let's read it. Uh, death report. Office of Pembroke Hospital Medical Examiner. Report of investigation. Decadent Samuel Connor. Race. Caucasoid. Caucasoid. Interesting. Never heard of that. Um. Sex male. Age 39. Home address unknown. Occupation fisherman. Type of death natural. Probable cause of death. Fast progressing pneumonia by virus induced pulmonary consolidation. Spanish influenza. Uh, examination attendees Dr. Corcoran Tippetts, Nurse Gwyneth Bran Branigan. Name and signature of medical examiner Dr. Cora Corker. Oh my god, I can't talk, boys. Corcoran Tippetts. Holy moly. Alright. So, yeah, let's actually get into main story progression here for once. And we're going to craft not this. Well, actually, we could. We have enough. But, um, yeah, we're going to craft treatment for fatigue, boys. You see that? We're actually at 1,000 XP. So we could get um, a second vampire attack, which would be kind of cool. So here we go. Crafted it. And bring the medicine to Dorothy Crane in the patient's room. Let's go do it. You know, actually, let's not because I would like to spend my XP and see what we can get with it. Because we're, yeah, we're level 6. Oh, we have tactical stuff up. Um, spring, you can perform a supernatural move to your target and cause damage upon landing. Hmm, interesting. Uh, shadow Veil, toggle, drain your stamina and... Uh, to fade into the shadows and become invisible to most enemies. Moving in this state will drain more stamina. You will exit the shadows if you attack or dodge or when your stamina is empty. Hmm. Honestly, not bad. Not bad at all. I kind of want to get one of these, though. Oh, wait, can I upgrade this? This would be kind of nice. Oh, I can't. Holy fuck. Oh, wait. Oh, it lets me, but... Okay. I kind of want to get something, like, here and now, though. Like... Like, we just died last episode. Spoiler warning. So, honestly, maybe more health is the move. So, let's just do it. Honestly. Let's just do that. Okay, so we have 400 left. Um, increased stamina would also be very nice. I tend to, um, button mash maybe a little bit too much in this game. So, we're gonna, we're gonna do that. We'll be good. So then, um, we're gonna go turn in our medicine here to one of the nurses. Dorothy Crane. So, we'll go do that. Let's go do it. So I've actually had a talk with um, a few subscribers of mine and looking at potential games and stuff for future Let's Plays and I've actually got 
a lot of different things I want to do and try and put on the channel, but um, yeah, we'll have to see where it goes. So, okay, here's uh, Dorothy Crane then. Here we are. Oh, diseases. Diseases decrease the blood quality of a citizen. Use the correct medicine to heal them. Speak to the patient in the room behind Dorothy to check his medical status. Alright. Dr. Reed, may I help you? Well, I'm here with the medicine. Oh, we'll just say I'll goodbye, I guess. A rat in the hospital. Talk to Edgar Swansea. Aren't I? Okay, yeah. Let's get. Let's give this guy the medicine. It Good didn't evening, tell Mr. me Oswick. I needed to, but. How are you? I'm okay. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. You are not a burden, sir. Healing you is my responsibility. And you have my gratitude for that. Do you need any help? Thank you, Dr. Reed, but you've done enough already. The rest is up to me now. Well, hey, there we go. I have to go now, sir. Gave but him medicine. Don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good evening, sir. Okay, so... Hopefully they're happy with a little bit of help. Oh, blood temptation. Remember, citizens' blood will provide you a massive XP boost. Look for citizens of your mesmerized level or below and choose wisely. Hmm. I honestly don't want to do that because like, I'm a nice guy and I don't want to like kill someone for their blood, but maybe we'll have to because that boss last episode kind of fucked me up. Yeah, here we go. We're going to talk to Dr. Edwas Eg Ed Edgar Swansea. Please, Jonathan, come in. Nice fucking office, dude. Holy shit. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body. Biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> the, you, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea, but my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead? Unalive? Immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. I'm a dead man. I was murdered. Now I'm a murderer. Tell me how this is a gift. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. I'm not some doe-eyed student, Edgar. I understand we both have something to gain from this relationship. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. 
You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. Okay, we're looking for a Lady Ashbury outside. But first, is there anything I can steal out of here? Okay, letter of Rakesh Chadana? Chadana? Look at that. We got another thing. Warning letter. Interesting. Oh, a third thing. Note to Dr. Swansea. Okay. Rare species of vampires. New collectible. Okay, four? Did we just get four new things to read? I mean, I'm down. Um. Okay, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Let's read them all. Where did... I don't know. Okay, we'll just... We'll read these here. Pembroke Hospital, 4th of August. Dear Dr. Swansea, I will be glad to manage the temporary morgue as soon as it's open. As I have already told you, I was a doctor during the war and I will be glad to serve my country again. I know it is not the same being a physician for the dead as it is for the living, but I believe it is important to welcome and take good care of our departed too. Rest assured, I will do my best to fully perform this new duty to the best of my ability. Concerning the question of my qualifications, I'm sorry I can't give you anything more than valuable, uh, more valuable than my parole. I swear to you that my regiment made me a doctor during the war, and that I have saved many lives. If my word is not enough, you can contact the military administration to verify my experience and skills. They will come, or they will confirm that even if I never followed my medical studies, the war taught me what a doctor really needs to know. Always sincerely, Rakesh uh, Chadana, former doctor. Okay, looks like we might get a new morgue and a new doctor here, so that's cool. Pembroke Hospital, 25th of October. Dear Dr. Swansea, I must inform you of my deepest reservations uh, concerning the doctor Thoru Strickland in Harvey Fittick case. Mr. Fittick has been hospitalized after a severe work injury. He may permanently lose the use of his arm if not treated adequately. Dr. Strickland claims that surgical procedure may save the man's arm completely. I say it may also uh, sever its functions for good if uh, complications arise. Our young colleague is an audacious and daring surgeon who might prove a great professional in a few years, but for now he lacks the skills to perform such a risky procedure. Need I remind you of the mistakes he made in the past? Since Dr. Strickland refuses to listen to me, I strongly advise you to forbid him to perform such a hazardous experiment. Very respectfully, Dr. Waverly Ackroyd. Oh, of course it's Ackroyd, dude. Of course it's Ackroyd. Um, Alright, Pembroke Hospital, 23rd of October. Dear Edgar, this is uh, this note is not for the Pembroke Administrator, but for my old friend. Since our short discussion two days ago concerning the possible promotion of the esteemed, Waverly Ackroyd at, as the new Chief of Surgeon at Pembroke, I have finally concluded that it wouldn't currently be in the best interest of the facility. Don't misunderstand me here, I'm convinced that Ackroyd is a very competent physician. I may even admit that he deserves a promotion, but not now. Not while we all struggle to keep the epidemic at bay. For now, we need a clear hierarchical organization, and we must avoid the inevitable uh, frustrated egos caused by such a promotion. We need an obeying and dedicated army. If I may even add, this is also a good test of character. Sometimes, uh, um, oh, I sometimes think Dr. Ackroyd is a little bit too proud, a little bit too eager to be promoted. To face a refusal may be a good way of finding how he deals with frustration. You wanted my opinion? Well, there you have it. I'd be ready to discuss these points directly with our colleague if he ever wanted me to justify my position on his promotion. Always sincerely, Cochran Tibbets. Or Tippets. Yeah. So it looks like um, every single doctor in here kind of has a problem with each other. So... That's interesting. Or not a problem, I guess, but they don't want each other, like, promoted and stuff like that, so. Um, right in the hospital, talk to the hospital benefactor. Eh. 
Hospital Bene. Oh, yeah. I remember. She's out here somewhere. Milton Hooks? I don't remember seeing you before. But I don't need to talk to you, so. Um. Oh, is this her? Wait, who is that, actually? Oh, a new patient, probably. Damn. Looks like we'll have to talk to a lot of people again. Uh, possibly soon. Oh, is this? Nope, that's the guy who got beat up. Uh, nope, that's Gwyneth. Oh, here she is. Oh, back inside here. Okay. So, yeah, we need to talk to her about funding and stuff still, because we are um, not doing well there. The flu took my dear wife, Emily. I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again. Mr. Rainfield, that's no way to talk. You're in good hands here, and we'll be up again soon enough. <laughs> Now do me a kindness and get some sleep. I'll be back round later. Your words are kind. The blessings of an angel. You're the sweet, sweet lady of mercy. Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You oh, seem surprised. Those eyes. Holy moly. Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speed concerning your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a vamp. The lady who saved me that night. Oh. Before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Indeed. Allow me to introduce I knew the eyes were something. formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. I remember you well. In spite of the brevity of our encounter. Apologies. You've taken me by surprise. I'm very happy to see you. The pleasure is mine, Doctor. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. You must have countless questions, but our rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My cover, if you prefer, has been compromised. Pardon my boldness, your ladyship, but I have questions concerning this condition we share. As a newborn, your hunger for answers is rivaled only by your thirst for blood. But the questions need weight. I'm a scientist. My trade is in the deciphering of mysteries, and I need information to feed my mind. I will gladly answer every question you have, but first... Prove yourself capable of resolving my predicament without eating the culprit. Okay, I can do that. Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your agent in this matter. You could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. I must refuse his most recent demands. Who would be so foolish as to threaten you, a kindred spirit? Even if it were the case, and I highly doubt it, a vampire would have asked for something more valuable than money. My suspicions lean toward a patient or their family. Please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. Is it true? Now aren't you the blunt one? <laughs> Excuse my impertinence, your ladyship. This is not an interrogation. I assure you that this line of questioning is in your best interest. In all honesty, I'm not simply a patron to the hospital. My visits serve a dual purpose. Dr. Swansea has been treating my condition with a revolutionary technique of blood transfusion. 
It seems you are a specialist in the domain. I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion, but I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your condition. All right, so we need to talk to Harriet. Oh, that's Milton. Um, that might be Harriet. I haven't met a Harriet, I don't think. So that would lead me to think that is Harriet. I haven't talked to him either, actually. Yeah, let's talk to this lady in here then. Simpletons, these nurses. Bred with no respect. Oh, yeah, this is her. Okay. What? What? What is this? Who are you? Get out of my room. There's no need for alarm, madam. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon. Preposterous. Dr. Reed, you say? I don't want some bumbling intern. Where's Dr. Swansea? Please, calm down, madam. I assure you that I am highly qualified. I'm just back from war duty. Ha! <laughs> How brave! Threatening an old defenseless woman! Well, you know I wasn't I threatening at all. Here. You've picked the wrong fight. I'm Harriet Jones. Harriet Jones? Indeed. I've been meaning to have a chat with you. You know what goes on here better than any other patient, I gather. Oh, better than any patient, nurse or doctor. I've seen so many vile undertakings. I heard there have been some despicable goings on. Was there a case of blackmail? Blackmail? I... Wait. You're investigating something. This isn't a social call. One of those incompetent cunts lit a poor sod's fame. I assure you, madam, this is not an investigation into a possible medical error. Debauchery, then? Nurses Crane, Hawkins, Brannigan's, whores, oh, all of them. They can't keep their legs shut. I've seen them scratching slutty sores. Really? Well, if you have irrefutable proof, I'll not have the staff behaving in such a manner here. This is your business, Doctor, not mine. Where one of the nurses is cavorting with some man on hospital hours. Thank you for your time, Miss Jones. Hmm. You've given me something to go on. See you on the next round. So we've actually the patients and staff oh. might know something. I'll start my investigation with them. Yeah, so we've actually um, learned a little bit about this already that uh, Pippa Hawkins, I'm pretty sure, was, uh, let's see, blackmailing these people over here. I can't remember their names. Yeah, Mortimer Goswick and Beatrice Goswick. Beatrice is apparently very rich, and I'm pretty sure Pippa Hawkins was uh, asking them for money for a room, so... Is that Pippa? Yeah. We're talking to you. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Hmm. Right. What can you tell me about the strange man visiting one of the nurses during her shift? Let me guess. You spoke with our old shrew, Harriet Jones. Do not pay attention to her, Doctor. She's full of fanciful tales. Hmm, she seems real defensive. She could have been telling the truth about the mysterious man. That old witch will end up in hell soon enough. Who cares if a nurse finds some happiness where she can? No matter how you feel about her, Miss Jones deserves our help. 
Who says I don't care for her? Hate is what keeps that old crone alive. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. So she was like super defensive when I asked her about it. So that kind of like literally drives my suspicion up already. What the hell? <laughs> He's just moaning out there. Um. Unknown person there. Oh, I'm literally going the opposite way of where I want it. Okay. Yeah, I want this way. Find the other nurses around here. Hmm, no. Where are they? Oh, Swansea's right there. Are they outside? Where are they? Oh, I could literally just, like, look at the map, too. I can do that. What is this nurse doing over here? Oh, eavesdrop. Press, okay, to activate senses. If a citizen is behaving suspiciously, their heart will emit a distinctive glow. By locking, er, wow, by looking at the citizen, you'll unlock a special interaction. Look for Dorothy Crane. Oh, I see her. Don't worry. You're sure you don't come back with me? Nah, I ought to see someone at the hospital. Be careful. You look so bad they may keep you as a patient. Fuck them. I don't like hospitals or doctors. Well then, when you go back to Whitechapel, you may find this useful. What is it? A pass for a free medical exam by the best nurse available. Just read it. I don't read well, but thank you, I guess. I guess we found who is behind it. Um, retrieve the thug in the sewers. Alright. Oh, wait. That's going to end our episode right here. This So, this will end episode 8 of our Vampire Let's Play. So, if you guys did like the episode, drop me a like down below. It really does help me out. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content out of me. And always ring that bell icon if you want to know when my videos go up for you. Um, follow the socials down below, Twitch TV, Twitter, Instagram. Make sure you follow them to know what's going on in my daily life. Check out the live streams. Those will be starting very soon. Um, and yeah, uh, this is the Sam Schmitty signing out. Peace, guys. See you later.